Greetings. One of the most useful tools in the world was never taught to you in high school or college or anywhere else, and that is a platonic abductive or retroductive reasoning. Is it arriving at the conclusions of things through objective negation? What this specifically is, is subjective synthesis, is quickly arriving at the answer to things that are not either A, objectively knowable, or are B, extremely abstruse ontological metaphysics. Um, I don't know if I should call this video idiot uh, physics and idiot Buddhism or not, but here's two perfect examples. Is that uh, fundamentally it's easy to debate the idiocy of, uh, and I'm not talking about religions here, although people think Buddhism is a religion. I mean, it was originally uh, a Sramanic reformation of uh, ancient Advaita Vedanta, which of course technically that came later, but I mean, what it means is specifically monism. Subjectively, and uh, in reference to abduction or retroduction to arrive at the logical analysis of something, we can say that if you eliminate out something really, really big, or a principle thereof, something huge, then you must replace it with something else that is hopefully more logical or more sensible that absolutely supports the entire structure that, it, uh, that sits upon it. For example, and uh, I've, of course, been debating Buddhists for ages, and they're incredibly unintelligent, and they know nothing about doctrine at all. Imagine if, like, Christianity's fundamental principle, um, as it currently exists, not originally, was uh, that Jesus never existed, and it's was like, wasn't well, it Christianity? I think it's based around Jesus, right? Well, you would say that, well, that's just completely insane, right? I mean, well, what would Christianity be if it denied Jesus? I mean, what would uh, any... And, of course, I'm never interested in religion. I, I can't stand religion. There's a huge difference between religion and metaphysics. Of course, religion is secularized metaphysics, meaning dumbed-down metaphysics. But when you deny the soul, for example, and that's what most of modern Buddhism does. By the way, those yellow-robed guys in Sri Lanka, Laos, Burma, and Thailand. By the way, I've been translating ancient to Pali for over 20 years, Prakrit. Like the uh, pillars of King Ashok, which uh, date to uh, the middle of the 2nd century BCE is written in Brahmi Prakrit. I can actually read that when it's Romanized, oddly enough. Uh, the fundamental principle of modern Buddhism, which is no connection to Buddhism at all, as Dr. A.K. Kumaraswamy said, modern Buddhism teaches everything that original Buddhism never, never taught. No, actually he said, modern Buddhism is most famous for everything that it originally never taught. Excuse me there is the denial of the soul. When you actually deny the most fundamental substrate of uh, metaphysical monism, i.e. the soul, the, not the self, meaning the objective self of psychophysicality, forms, feelings, perceptions, impulses, and empirical consciousness, or in Pali it would be rupa vedana sama sankaran vinyana. What you are left with is nihilism. You are left with this uh, type of spiritual suicide where absolute attainment is like fleshing your entire being, and by being I mean ontos, I mean the absolute, the body of course passes away, thrown into a grave. I mean, if you're not intelligent enough to differentiate out the empirical self of forms, feelings, and blood, and guts, and piss, and urine, and poop from the ontological self, then you're not very smart and you know nothing about metaphysics at all, but I mean, that's okay because most people, because none of you learn about this stuff in high school or college. We're talking about the self, the self with a capital S. Like they use in Old English, where the, uh, the Old English they say, not as nearly a soul was seen on the streets. You know, they talk about a person as a soul, as a living being. By the way, the word animal, people say, does an animal have a soul? It's like, do you, you know the word animal means has a soul. That's what the word animal actually means. When you deny this fundamental substrate or the firmament upon which transcendence uh -huh, and liberation, or in the ancient Pali, vimutta, and uh, absolute bliss, perimum sukum. I mean, you, when you remove the foundation, then everything completely collapses. And that's exactly what defines uh, like 90% of modern Buddhism. Well, there's no soul in Buddhism because Buddhism taught anatta. There was no soul. It's like, that's not the case. There are 576 occurrences of that term. I'm actually the number one expert on the entire planet of Earth. No exaggeration on that particular topic. I know every occurrence of it. And it only occurs as an uh, affirmation, an adjective, relative to another noun. There are 22 things that are said to be not the soul. If I said, this is not the soul, asking you, if this is not the soul, and this is not the soul, and this is not the soul, would you therefore, as an unintelligent moron, conclude, he told me there was no soul. He said, that's not a soul. I'm like, no. 
This is, of course, actually ancient Indian apophaticism or via negativa. This is not it, that's not it. Objective negation, listen closely, leads to subjective synthesis. In other words, when you deny all this, you draw everything back in. You know, the dilution or diminution of the soul as projected through forms, feelings, phenomena, the psychophysicality, which is anatta, isokaya, namisata. If Buddhism was completely illogical, it would not spend an enormous amount of time in doctrine, and I'm an expert on ancient Pali doctrine, saying that's not the soul, that's not the soul, that's not the soul, that's not the soul. You would simply say, right, you're going to agree with me on this, there is no soul. I don't have to tell you that's not the soul or that's not the soul. I say, there is no soul. Period. End of story. But that doesn't occur in doctrine anywhere. When I say doctrine, I mean digging Majima, Samura, and Gotaro, and Kudaka, and Nakea. Some people actually unintelligently, as like knuckle dragging mental midgets, will talk about commentary that came 600 years later. And this is, of course, one of the heresies of uh, true metaphysics or uh, religion is that when you have commentary written by heretical fools and demons like a thousand plus years later and you use commentary as the prism or filter through which you interpret doctrine then you're a fool um, no branch of any metaphysics or uh, religion ever says that commentary is the point of reference and this is of course the principle of sola scriptura which, and of course, this is the same uh, problem that Martin Luther encountered in Germany, is that you had all these uh, scumbag Catholic piss ants in fancy robes that were quoting commentary, and Martin Luther was like, no, it says here right in the Bible, because commentary is always dumped upon, and, you know, gets the mic drop from uh, doctrine. And uh, I encounter this all the time. It's just kind of a... Uh, a red herring when it comes to debating evil and incredibly unintelligent, ignorant people. But I mean, this is what happens when you move a fundamental substrate. Like, and the same thing exists in current physics. And current physics is not physics at all. True physics is Aristotelian and Platonic. And uh, it was the search for truth with the big ass T. Big ass T is not just physics, it's metaphysics. So it's physics. Well, physics. And metaphysics are either side of the same damn coin, which I don't have. Here we go. It's like, here's physics and here's meta metaphysics. It's all one thing. It's the coinage, right? The silver of the coin. There's no such thing as physics versus metaphysics. It's all the same silver. <coughs> Period. That's how the Pythagoreans, the Indians, the Platonists understood things. It's not this versus that. It's all the same shit, just different sides of the same damn thing. I'm going to approach the coin from this side. You approach the coin from this side. We're both looking at the silver of the coinage, right? Here's one side, here's the other side. And this is the silver right here. That's all that's important is the silver. Modern physics is not physics at all. What it is is uh, mathematics. And mathematics... Hugest heresy is that it don't like, yeah, I said it don't like, that's right. It don't like anything that can't be counted. And so you must quantize everything. This is where you get quantum from. If you can't quantize it, then you can't count it. And if you can't count it, it doesn't exist, and there's no use to study it. You know, it's just ridiculous. Everything is fields, and fields are not particles. You cannot quantize a field unless you draw a fine box around it, like in the Maxwellian field equations, of the vector over a period of time. In other words, you can only define a field over time, with a vector, with a result, joules, watts, volts, yada yada, amps. That still doesn't tell you what the hell a field is. Here's a quotation I made a long time ago, and I think it goes like this, that a fool will describe to you what's going on, but the wise person will explain to you what the F is going on. But when you remove the physics, and the physics in uh, the ether, excuse me, when you remove physics, sorry about that, when you remove the ether, um, from true physics, by true physics I mean original friggin' physics, when you remove the ether, it's like removing the soul. It's like, there's no such thing as a religion or metaphysics that denies the soul, because there would be no quest for improvement, it would become spiritual suicide. You can't remove the soul, and of course it is not objectively knowable because it is the subject. Subject precedes the object of uh, negation. You cannot objectively know the soul, but that is not a denial of the soul. What it is, is it means, in, is this is apophaticism, I, what the Indians called neti neti, i.e. not this, not that. 
the via negativa, the path of the negative. You will arrive as the subject, i.e. the soul, through objective negation. This is not the soul, that's not the soul. When you identify what is not the soul, you push away from the source of that which causes suffering. Technically, the source is uh, avidya, primordial agnosis, which is not specifically ignorance, which is empirical, but uh, ontological ignorance. When you actually push away from that, you get closer and closer and closer and closer to the big T, transcendence liberation. You can't believe in liberation or transcendence, no matter what sort of uh, nonsense you do or don't believe in, without the soul. Without the soul, it all falls apart like a deck of cards. You cannot remove the ether from physics or uh, the sciences, if you will. The Russians would call it Akademia Nauk. I hope some Russians are listening. Akademia Nauk. You can't remove the ether without replacing it with what I call, gleefully, the cult of bumping particles. When you remove the ether, what you're left with is, is this unintelligent, logical nonsense that Mother Nature is a hooker on crack, a crazy cross-eyed hooker on crack, and everything is bumping particles. And that's absolute bullshit. The universe can't work that way. That doesn't ins explain instantaneous action at a distance, doesn't explain EPR, it doesn't explain anything. You can't work that way. It's impossible. You can't even explain natural phenomena like light. Once you remove the ether, you are left with shit that moves and shit that bumps. And the universe does not work that. It can't. It's not, well, that's your belief. That's what you think, tattooed boy. No, it cannot work that way. It's absolutely impossible. It cannot. It's not even intuitable. You could not even, if you have five brain cells, that is, you couldn't even postulate a universe we're in which the ether does not exist. It's impossible. You can't pos uh, 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 posit, yes, I said the word posit, that's what it is. You can't posit a system of metaphysics where the soul is denied. Transcendence is impossible. What transcends what? Well, it's kind of like, you know, it's like, uh, well, if you deny this, and this is really what like idiot Buddhists will tell you, and they're so incredibly stupid. They're the, some of the dumbest monkeys on earth when you debate these. I've debated them for decades. Well, when you deny this, all, you know, what transcendence then becomes is just like, you just like, psh, it's like a fart in the wind. You know, it's like that's the ultimate bliss is to, is to just can be completely like spiritually, suicidally flushed into the, uh, the, uh, the black sphincter of oblivion. This is ultimately what they are actually saying. They don't say it exactly like that, but that's exactly what they're saying. Transcendence is impossible, it becomes a farce. So transcendence is spiritual suicide. There's, there's no attainment, there's nobody that attains it. And by nobody, when we say nobody, we don't mean Bob, Sue, Larry, because the psychophysical persona, which is the persona, persona non grata, of course does not attain to that. You know, the psychophysical's transcendence is, of course, illogically impossible. But when you remove the soul, and you, when you remove the ether, what you must replace it with is so absolutely obnoxiously laughable, stupid, unintelligent, illogical that you, you know, anybody with a brain at all, and nobody has a brain anymore, trust me. People are so stupid these days. People are so damn dumb. This world is, this world is F-U-C-T. Capital F-U-C-T. God, people are so stupid. People have always been stupid, but man, they're real. People like revel in stupid, like a hog uh, uh, turns around in its own poop in the mud and loves it. That's how people say, like, I love being stupid. I like not knowing shit. <laughs> it's like, really? Yeah, man. I'm going to take me a Xanax and pop a beer and watch the Cartoon Network till I got to go back to McDonald's on Monday, make me some more money. <laughs> You know that's not far from the truth. Um, think about these things when you uh, listen to what a stupid person has to say. Like, what do you? And beliefs, you know, nobody is their beliefs. Uh, anytime someone says, "I believe," "I believe," the words that follow after that are always something unintelligent, unthoughtful, unwise. I believe. I don't care what you believe. I care about what's logical, and or factual. I believe the first words of a sentence that will always end in stupid. <laughs> I believe.
<laughs> I believe I could fly. I believe that was R. Kelly, right? Man, did you ever see that R. Kelly interview with Barbara Walters? I think it was. I didn't even get accused of hurting all those women. Remember R. Kelly? Hint, hint, nod, nod, hint, hint. I didn't do nothing. He gets up out of that chair. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> I'm innocent. <laughs> it's everybody else's fault. I'm innocent, damn you. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, this world is so sick and in the dark. Did I say that out loud? I will edit that out of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do svidaniya, uvidim si aloha. Catch you later, Girl Scout. And, um, um, yeah, I'm going to speak out to the Russian folks out there. Uvidim si tovarish. Nechevo strašnova. Idi suda, djevoška. Suda, suda, suda. The Russians know what I said. Bye.